Hi, I'm Michael Sinoff, founder and CEO of HardToFindSeminars.com. For the last five years, I've interviewed the world's best business and marketing minds. Now my challenge is to build the world's largest free resource for online, downloadable audio business interviews. I've learned a lot in the last five years, and today I'm going to show you the skills you need to survive. The only difference between you and anybody in this world that has more out of life than you do. And keep in mind that when I talk about success, I'm not talking about financial success alone. Everyone doesn't want that. I'm talking about being the best eater, the best preacher, the best doctor, the best housewife, the best lawyer, the best of whatever it is you choose. We sell a course, and you know what this course is? You know what we're selling you? We're selling you nothing. We are selling you nothing. All we're doing is developing what's already in your mind. And nobody wants to buy nothing, and most people think they're nothing. So how can we sell a man himself when he doesn't think much of himself? He's rather buy an automobile. That's important. He'd rather put $5,000 for Glenn Turner and let him use it because he believes I can do it. But you're not going to get him too easily to invest in nothing. And who says he's nothing? Not I. Not himself. His neighbors and friends have told him all his life that he is nothing. Hi, this is Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. You've just heard about one minute of one of the most powerful speeches I have ever heard in my life. And stay tuned till the very end of this recording, and I'm going to show you how to get this entire 40-minute speech absolutely free. Get ready, because here's one of the most fascinating and enjoyable interviews I've done to date. It's with a gentleman named Glenn W. Turner. Now, if you're over 50, you may have heard of this gentleman, because back in the early early 70s. He was like the Tony Robbins of the early 70s. He was a tremendous businessman. He built a tremendous multi-level marketing company called Coscott. There are several books written about him, and he was a motivator and an inspirational teacher. He had operated over 76 corporations under Turner Enterprises. An hour of me going through his life story, you'll hear the tremendous adversity he had uh, from the time he was born to a mega success to the fall of his empire. It's truly a wonderful story, and the lessons he gives are heartfelt, and you can certainly use them in your life and in your business. This is not the kind of interview you can listen to one time. My interviews are packed with content. There's no fluff, and you just got to keep listening to them. So without further ado, let's get going with this exclusive interview only found at Michael Sinoff's Hard to Find Seminars dot com with Glenn Turner. Enjoy. Hello. Good morning, Glenn. Mike Sinoff here. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. Good. Glenn, give me just a little bit of your background, your roots. Where did you come from? I was born in Charity Ward, my unwed mother, in Columbia, South Carolina. My mother had a complication of scarlet fever. As a result, it caused me to be born with a hair lip and a clip towel. And what year were you born? 1934, August 19, 1971, a half years old. And I'm still in good shape. My mother was transported by the county to the hospital. She was unmarried. Seven months later, my father and her got married. She had to leave me in the hospital so they could do the operation on my lip and do a metallic pushback. And then about a month later, I came home. For the first seven months, I lived with my grandmother because my mother went to work as a waitress. And, you know, back in the day, it was a sin and a shame and a worse it is now to be born without a father. Then I was raised on a tobacco farm in Marion, South Carolina, and I dropped out of school in the eighth grade, and I went into the airport when I was 17 years old. Yeah, why'd you drop out of school? Well, they, they, people make fun of my hair lip was my main excuse, and my father and mother weren't too educated, so they couldn't help me, you know. Kids made fun of me, and I was always getting in fight. And then I went into the U.S. Air Force at 17 years old. With my father signed the paper, and I got a stay for one year in the Air Police. But I got a perforated eardrum. I had it when I went in. I didn't catch it. 
and they discharged me within one year, medical discharge. And then I went to the opportunity school on GI Bill. Opportunity school was run by a 72-year-old lady named Dr. Willard Gray. And Dr. Willard Gray was an old maid, come from a rich family, that started a school for people that dropped out of high school to come back and get their high school diploma. How'd you find out about it? Well, the state employment office in my hometown, Mrs. Leighton, was trying to get me a job. She said, you're not going to qualify for anything. You don't have no education. And I was 18. I had the GI Bill. She knew about the school. And she, it was operated by Dr. Gray. Later, the school was given to the state of South Carolina. I donated a $150,000 scholarship fund to the school when I got rich. And she would bring in kids and train them? Forever kids and people that slow in school and even adults that were 30, 40 years old that had missed their high school and wanted to come back and get their diploma. Did that experience influence you to be so generous and give back to the community? Yeah, and Dr. Willard Gray changed my life. you got to realize she was somebody. I was fortunate to be her chauffeur two months one summer, and I chauffeured her around the state, and I watched her go into politicians' office and governor's office and ask them for funds for the school in the old Air Force base in Columbia. was donated to her for private school to barracks and everything. It changed my life. Otherwise, I would have been pumping gas to the gas station of her. What do you remember? What did she tell you? She told me, where will you be 10 years from today? She said, you're going to be married to some overweight woman with 10 children on a tobacco farm pushing a plow. Scared the dick out of him. I was afraid to look at a girl like for a while there. You didn't want to be growing up on a tobacco farm? No, because I always knew in the bottom of my heart that I was wealthy, money-wise and attitude-wise. And I used to make a lot of jokes to get people to laugh with me and not at me, like a lot of comedians do. So I would do all kind of stuff to entertain people and be funny. And when I got out of the opportunity school, I went to the University of Houston for a diesel engineer mechanic course, but I didn't last by six months. I dropped out because I decided I didn't want to be greasy. So I went into door-to-door sales for sewer machines. How did you first find that job? Well, a guy came out of my mama's house and sold her a sewer machine, and I was against her buying it because it cost $150. We didn't have that kind of money. So at that time, we lived in a house with an outhouse out back and all that. It was this like when sewing machines first came out? Yeah, they were selling Japanese machines. You got to realize this in 1952, and the Japanese were starting to put machines. Nobody was against anything. The Japanese made because of the war, you know. And so I came in, the guy had mom and daddy all sold on the buy the sewing machine, and I started getting negative, talking about it. And he looked at me and said, boy, you are a one-built kid. Said, Where do you get all them muscles? I'm a weightlifter. And I had won the third place in Mr. South. 1952. So, make a long story short on that issue. He bragged on me so much, he sold me, and then I said, Well, go ahead and get it, Daddy. I'll trip it after money to it. Put the mash on me, as I call it. After he left, my mama said, Glenn, you'd make a good salesman. You can do what he did. Had a brand new station wagon. He probably made $40 sale on that commission, which more than I made all week. And so I went to Green 200 miles away with my old black Ford that I paid $125 for, selling sweet potatoes door to door. And save the money. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard hitting, mind blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word-for-word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.